So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. I can see uh, Vicky is on. Hannah, welcome. John and Elizabeth, Karibuni to our session today. Uh, today's junior membership program session is on emotions. Oh, thank you. More people have joined. Welcome. So today, what our session is on what emotions tell us. My name is Eunice Kuria. I'm a member of Women on Boards Network. And I also serve in one of the board committees for advocacy and policy. Uh, today we have a great speaker, uh, uh, Vicky, who is going to take us through this uh, topic. And probably I would just like to introduce uh, our junior membership for those who have, have don't, don't have uh, information on it. First of all, just to talk about Women on Boards Network, it, it's an initiative uh, on board network. It, it, it promotes and encourages women into the board and leadership um, uh, positions. Uh, the, the network actually supports, trains, networks, and continues to grow uh, women in leadership. Now, as part of uh, growth to grow our young leaders, women in, in, on board started the junior membership. And the junior membership is um, actually for young, it's a young adult program constituting of youth between 11 and 24 uh, years of age. Junior membership is built on the idea of infusing age diversity into the boardroom, training and inspiring future leaders, advising the board on social change and trends. So it's never too, you're never too young to start um, aspiring to be a board member. Having this program is part of Women on Boards Network planning for the future and the risk uh, and the risk that might come with it. In this program, the juniors are taught all things regarding leadership and corporate governance. Who needs junior uh, membership? Juniors in university and college level seeking offices can get leadership training and mentorship. Juniors seeking to establish their careers juniors aspiring to be future board leaders, juniors seeking to venture into vol the volunteering space. What benefits do you get when you join our junior membership under the Women on Boards Network? Mentorship comes that will offer career and professional advice. They will be brought into the Women on Boards Network spaces, meetings, um, so that you get experience and get practice on how board's proceedings um, go by. Networking, you'll get to meet a lot of people, especially when you start looking for a job and when you're about to finish college. And then volunteer opportunities that would expose them to leadership and career trainings, e.g. internships. So those are some of the benefits for junior membership. So we look forward to some of you joining and all of you are welcome to join. So allow me to introduce our speaker today, Vicky Karuga. Karibu. Vicky is a managing director uh, of Profiles International TMS Kenya Limited, a people development and assessment company that is based in Kenya but operates in East Africa. She's a registered architect with 17 years of experience and co founder of Tarakibu Architects, a boutique architectural consultancy company. Vicky loves, Vicky lo Vicky's love is in team coaching facilitation, but she's also a genius emotional intelligent practitioner and trainer. So she's very vast in this field and will be good to take us through this session. She's a member of the Nairobi Music Society with whom she performs once in a while at their various concerts for charity whenever she can. She also uh, is a drummer and drums for a local rock band, Murphy's Flow. She is a wife and a mother of three handsome sons and a beautiful daughter and enjoys a round of golf once in a while. She believes in the power of people and their great potential in their power of self-discovery. She draws greatly from the stories of inspiration told by others. So Vicky Karibu Sana, for anyone else on the call, please feel free to put your questions on the chat. We shall, uh, Vicky, will, uh, Vicky will let us know when we can start answering the questions and welcome all to this session. Thank you very much. Vicky, welcome. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Eunice, for that introduction. 
I hope everyone can hear me. Um, I'd actually encourage everyone to just put on their mics because this is going to be a, an interactive session. I want uh, to hear you and, uh, and I'm going to be asking so many questions as we go along in this webinar. So because I can see all of you and I can see all your names, I hope you don't mind when I call out your name for you to answer one question or two. But I'll start with a story. Um, what are you holding in your hand? Do you have a glass of water? Do you have a glass of uh, tea? Anything around you? Do you have a, a cup? I have a, I have a, I have a coffee mug. Anyone else? Vicky, like me. Anyone? Eunice has a cup. Mark, John, and Elizabeth. Anyone? Yeah, we do. You have a cup? Yeah. Okay, so I want you to hold the cup. Just hold it up. What does it look like? How does it feel like? How does holding this cup feel like right now? Anyone, Mark? Uh-huh. It feels light? Yeah. Okay, keep holding it, don't put it down. Anyone else? Anyone else who can share how it feels like? How does it feel like Eunice holding this cup? My hand is getting heavier and heavier. So what are you thinking about this cup right now? It's becoming a burden for me. <laughs> I want to put it down. <laughs> Anyone else who wants to put their cup down? Yes, Vicky. Yes, it's tiring. It's tiring. Yes. Uh, you can put your cups down. So what do you think if you held that cup for like uh, five more minutes? What would you feel like? Irritated. Irritated? <laughs> what about if you held it for an hour? What would you feel like holding it for an hour? What do you think you'd feel like holding it for an hour? Frustrated, maybe. Frustrated? Yeah. Anyone else? I'm just hearing the voice of Vicky. Anyone? <laughs> Sorry? Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, yes. Who would be happy to hold it for a day? Like giving up. You'd feel like giving up, uh huh? Can we allow them, to, Vicky? Yeah, Vicky, can we allow them to put on their videos? Put on your videos. Put on your videos so that we it's easy to communicate. We are not too many, so it's okay. You can put on your videos, Vicky. You can continue. Okay. So I hear you feel frustrated, you feel uncomfortable, you feel like giving up, so many things. So who would like to tell me, um, what's an emotion? Just give me, describe it in your words, what's an emotion? Emotions are the feelings that you get, they might be good or bad. You get feelings that you get, they might be good or bad. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Maybe the, the feelings you get after an occurrence in your life, it's like the way you react to a certain situation, you get emotion. You get emotion. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to have another guess? Um, excuse me? Yes? Um, the host stopped my video, so like I can't start it at all. Okay. Um, Hannah, you can start the video for John and Elizabeth. Yeah, it's okay. No, it's okay. Uh, 
So Elizabeth, what are you making? I'm here. What yeah, I can see you. What mm -hmm. are you uh, I said emotions were oh, okay. the feelings that you get, they might be good or bad. It might be good or bad. Yeah. Okay. How many emotions I, have you felt today? How many do you think you felt today? Hmm. A lot. <laughs> kind of hard to tell. I was happy at some point, sad, worried. Worried. Esther, how many emotions have you felt today? Very many. Very many? Yes. Which one, which one do you think you felt the most today? Because we get happy, we get sad, we get anxious, we, so many in a day. Happy. Um, happy, okay. Yeah. So it's, been day. it's been a happy day for you. Yeah, it has. Who hasn't had such a happy day today? Okay. So I'll ask you another. I think Vicky has frozen just a bit. Just give her a few minutes. Eh? Um, so we, I think she was asking about emotions eh? before she comes back. Who had answered? Who haven't we heard from? Karen, you answered, isn't it? Let's yeah. wait for Vicky to come back. Karen said you are feeling happy today. Um, I think that was Esther. Esther. Yeah, but I'm, I also felt happy. You felt happy today. Uh, who else yeah. is there? Uh, Mark? Mark Mungai? Yes. What, what was your feeling like today? Your emotions? Oh, did I disappear? Yes, Vicky, you disappeared. <laughs> Mark was just giving his emotions for today. Okay, Mark, maybe you can say then Vicky can continue. How are you feeling today? Yeah, well, for me, I've mostly felt, I'd say, happy so far. Happy for today. Oh, that's yeah. good. Great. Okay, Vicky will continue. <laughs> Sorry. So you said there were two. Uh, did they give the two emotions? Uh, they gave, I've had happy, happy so far. Okay. So I want two emotions, one that makes you feel great and another one that makes you feel not so great. Just share any two. Mm. <laughs> um, when I'm feeling um, happy, that's the great one. And when I'm feeling embarrassed, it, it's not um, enjoyable, yeah. It's not enjoyable. Happy, yeah. and embarrassed. Anyone else who wants to share? Two, one so great, one that makes you feel great, and another one that doesn't make you feel so great. Uh, maybe Jennifer. Jennifer, are you there? Or Vicky? Okay. So let me use uh, uh, Karen's example. So one emotion that makes you feel so great is happy. And when do you feel happy? When you've done something that maybe excites you, yeah? When you've met someone who you really, really like, you feel happy. Uh, what else makes you feel happy? When you've passed exams, you feel happy? Yeah. What else? When uh, you get a new dress or a new anything, you feel happy? Yeah. When you talk yeah. to your friends. When you talk to your friends, you feel happy. And when do you feel embarrassed? I'll use embarrassed. Let's say, let's say, 
let's say maybe you're answering something maybe during class or something of the sort and then um maybe i don't know maybe something <laughs> went wrong and maybe you answered it wrong mm -hmm. so it's kind of odd and somehow embarrassing mm -hmm. yeah okay so when you're feeling happiness where do you feel happiness in your body can you feel it anywhere try and imagine yourself being happy where where is that happiness um i guess like i just i don't know exactly how but i feel like i i smile more you smile more yeah yeah anyone else who wants to share do you have a sensation in your body when you're feeling happy Mm, your heart beats faster. Your heart beats faster. You feel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wants to share? Okay. So what about the other side? What about when you experience embarrassment? Where do you feel it? You also feel like your heart is like beating a bit faster and you like, it's just like, it, okay, you just like feel like the whole world is like trying to suck you in in a way, yeah. Okay. Mark, where do you feel uh, sadness or, uh, or even Anthony, I see this Anthony here. Where do you feel, where do you feel the not so great emotions in your body? I know when, when, when I'm, when I'm get, getting scared, I feel my chest getting very, very heavy. Very, very, very heavy. I feel like it wants to clog up. That's my, my, my scared feeling. Anyone wants to share? Just think back to when you, even maybe today, or someone scared you out of the blue. What did you feel? Did your ears get hot? Did your, did your stomach start having butterflies or did you feel like your stomach opened up uh did your knees wobble a little bit your brain stops your brain stops yeah you mute your you mute? Pause, like you freeze you freeze yeah you freeze okay so i'm going to I'm tell you that. and then yeah. Um, sometimes you feel like you're shivering in a way. You feel like you're shivering? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to tell you, uh, John and Elizabeth, uh, well, Elizabeth, you want to share something? Uh, when we fear, I feel like a mini heart attack on my side. Like my heart thumps so fast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I get like a minor headache or something. You get a minor headache. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? I really want you to share. Tell me what you feel. Just think back. Even try and close your eyes and see if you can remember that feeling. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a short story. And when I tell you this uh, short story, just try and think back to, your, to the way you've been experiencing emotions. So once upon a time, we were all born at some point as human beings, and we were given a brain. But in this brain, we were given a small brain we call the emotional brain, where all our emotions come from. So most of the things that you experience come from some little part of your brain. In fact, if you put your, a pen, well, if you point your finger to your eye and you point your finger to your ear, it's somewhere where those two lines meet. It's somewhere at the center there. And the purpose of this little thing, cause it's not a big thing, is to tell you when you're experiencing something that's dangerous for you or something that's a good thing for you, that is rewarding for you, that is joyful for you. So when we were hunters, when we were gatherers, when we were living our lives without all these buildings, 
That is how we survived. So each and every single time we saw food, we got happy. That little thing told the brain that, oh my goodness, now we can survive. We have a lot more food to eat. So we went and picked the fruit and we brought it home. Or when we saw people we loved, we sat down around the fire, we shared stories, we laughed and laughed and we slept. And the brain told us that everything is good. But at the same time, when we experienced like a lion, you know, coming towards us, the same thing told us that we were experiencing a threat. And so it sends messages to our body to make us prepare for either fighting or for running away. So that same little thing is what is responsible for most of our emotions today. So in short, we still react to situations pretty much in the same way as our, the people who we come from reacted. So when, I'll give you an example. When you find someone in school, for instance, who's a bully, and maybe they block your way and they start saying just uh, words that you don't like, hurtful words to you. That same brain tells you that, you know what, this place is not good for you. This person is not good for you. And immediately puts you either in fight mode or flight mode or freeze mode. As someone said, you feel mute, you feel you can't do anything. So you, you either prepare yourself to fight, you prepare yourself to run away, or you prepare yourself to, or you don't prepare yourself at all, actually you just freeze. But all these messages are sent fast to our body. And that's why I was asking you, what do you feel when maybe you're feeling embarrassed? What's that feeling in your body? Because it comes and kind of takes over you. It's not your fault, it's no one's fault. It's just the way we were made. And it happens to everyone all the time. But the difference is that unlike the olden days, we have choices because we are no longer being attacked by lions. So the next time when you experience a very strong emotion, you have to start thinking and being aware of what is it doing to you and why is it there? Any strong emotion that has come to your mind as I've been talking? Whether it's joy. Mm -hmm. Any, anything, Karen or Mark? There's a name here I can't pronounce. Some, Ali Vidza, Arunga. Anyone with a question on what I've said? Anyone with a comment on what I've said? My next question to you is, now that I've told you that little story, think back to a time when, when you were feeling either very happy or you were feeling very angry. What was going on? Anyone would like to share? What do you think was going on in your brain? I'll share, I'll share another little story. When I, when I see my baby fall down and hurt themselves, I feel my, my stomach kind of cringe. I think every mother feels that. And I feel some pain in my heart, very, very strong pain. And that is even before I start maybe crying because of all I'm feeling. Now, before I go to my child, already I have felt a lot of things in, in, my, in my being, yeah? I have a choice. I can decide to cry 
and tell and uh, go cry to either my husband or my other babies, or I can run to my baby. Because what that emotion is telling me is that something you hold so dear, yeah, is getting hurt. And so you have to do something about it. And that's what emotions are. They tell you that something you hold so dear is either being hurt or if you're happy, it's being given to you. So when you go to a place and you say you're talking and you feel embarrassed because you didn't do well, it's telling you something. The embarrassment is okay. It's telling you something. It's telling you something you hold so dear. And it could be your reputation because you hold your reputation so dear. And so you're feeling like it's threatened. That maybe people are going to view you in another way. Yeah. But sometimes when we, when we don't pay attention to our emotions, we might um, release those emotions to other people who don't deserve them. So for instance, I may be in school and my teacher um, fails me or whatever it is and makes me feel really bad. And when I come home because I didn't share that emotion with anyone or I didn't act on it, I sit in a corner and my mother gives me more homework and I continue feeling bad, yeah? And when my little brother who has nothing to do with anything comes to me to try and play with me, I lash out at him and I say some hurtful things to my little brother or even my father or anybody who had nothing to do with where those emotions came from. And when that happens, if you don't sit back and ask yourself, why did I do that? Why did I make noise to someone who love it? If you don't sit and ask yourself that question, it becomes a habit. So what emotions tell us is that there is something important to us that we need to look at. That we need to address. And I asked you at the very beginning of this talk to hold a cup and you held it for some time. When you held it for one minute, two minutes, it was okay, it wasn't too bad. When you held it for five minutes, what happened? <clears throat> when you held it for 10, what else happened? You wanted to let it go. Someone said, I was feeling frustrated, I was feeling irritated. That's yeah. the same thing with emotions. When you hold them for too long, when you don't act upon them immediately, at some point they also want to, what do they want to do? They want to come out. They want to come out. And where will they come out? On somebody who doesn't, who's, who didn't do, who, who didn't have to do anything about it, like who was not really involved. Yes, someone who might not have even been involved. So sometimes we feel embarrassed about the emotions that we think are not so great. It's easy for us to, when we are happy, oh my goodness, oh my God, everything, and we're hugging and hugging and hugging. So it's easy, but when the emotions that we think are not so good, we might find it hard to, to speak about them and talk to other people about them. But someone said, I think it was Elizabeth, emotions are not good or are not bad. And as you grow up, you have to start understanding that emotions are telling you something. If you're feeling bad, maybe you haven't spoken out about something. If you're feeling angry, there is something that you, have, you, you, you need resolved. Maybe you haven't felt hard and you need to be listened to, yeah? So sometimes it helps to have someone who you can go to, whoever that is, when you start feeling a certain kind of way so that you can be able to express yourself, so that you don't end up like this cup, yeah? And end up releasing emotions on people. Have you, have you had someone say something like, I don't know where it came from. I mean, she just came and she's just being all unreasonable and we're really trying to help her. So I think as young leaders, as people who want to grow up to make um, a difference in the world today, you have to realize it always starts, where does it always start? 
it starts you. With, it starts with you. It always starts with you. And you must start trying to understand where your emotions are coming from. Where are they coming from? What's causing them? Even if you, you're happy the whole day, there must be somewhere where it came from. Was it that you woke up in the morning and you got a really big hug from your mom? Is that the thing that makes you happy? Because if that thing makes you happy, then maybe you need to be telling your mom, you need to hug me more because it makes me happy in the morning. And as you grow up like that, then you start understanding which, which activities in your life make you happy and which ones don't make you so happy so that when you're not feeling so happy, you can look for the ones that make you happy to make you happy again. You've all been very quiet and I was hoping we'd have a, a session where we talk back and forth. Let me hear what you have to say. Yeah, any questions? Maybe you miss you want to yeah, let me let me maybe ask something which might is 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 also in my head. Mm -hmm. You said we do a list of what makes us happy and what doesn't make us happy. What happens if you find your list has very many unhappy things? How do you work at cultivating things that make you happy? Maybe you can take us through, give us ideas. Okay. So the first thing everyone has to learn to do everyone is to be at peace with both happy feelings and unhappy feelings because as long as you shall live you shall have both happy feelings and unhappy feelings they don't go away there's no magic one that makes them go away they will always be there but the difference is knowing that you've moved from happy to unhappy the you might have a, a long list of sad, angry, um, when you start writing down your lists, you must start asking yourself why. And I'll ask this question to you. When do you most get angry? For me, when, for me is when things aren't going my way. When things aren't going your way. Yeah. Anyone else? When do you get most angry? So what happens when things aren't going your way? How, how, how do you move yourself from anger? Mostly I just wait it out. <laughs> it's a good way. Anyone else want to share? Um, when people are lying to you, like straight to your face, and are not really being the most honest with you. Mm -hmm. And you get angry. Yeah. Anyone else? So, um, we when I'm trying to like talk to someone and they aren't listening, Yeah. You get angry. Yeah. Okay. So when Vicky, um, when, you're, when you say you wait it out, what happens so that you can decide to wait it out? Uh, normally, I feel like um, if, I, if I act on it, um, I'll end up doing, doing or saying something that I'll regret. So I decided to just keep quiet about it and wait for my emotions to cool down. Okay. So at least recognizing that there's a point in which your emotions need to subside before you do something about it. Yes. So what, I'll give an example of myself. I, I really, really love music. 
it's not what I do for a living, but I really, really love music. And when I feel uh, either angry or I feel very, very sad or anything, the first thing I do is I either put on my earphones and put on some music that makes me happy. Or I'll go to the piano and I'll start playing some songs that make me happy. But that is not something I discovered um, today. It's taken me some time to discover that music for me is what really, really makes me happy. For someone else, it could be watching comedy. There are very many people who say before they go to sleep, they watch comedy so they sleep happy, yeah? So I think what, what I can answer your question, Eunice, is that there is, you might believe that the, state, the list of unhappy things need to be there, but they don't need to be there. You can change that. Yeah? You can actually alter the way you feel by engaging in something else that makes you feel happier. And that's a fact of life. That explains why you may be feeling low, but your favorite uncle walks into the room and says, what's up? And all of a sudden you break out into a smile. And I mean, but one minute you are on the other side. So you can, you can change that, but you have to decide to change that. Sometimes it's easier to remain angry, isn't it? It's easier to remain angry, right? Sometimes it's like you're trying to prove a point to the people you're angry with, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But at the end of the day, who ends up hurting the most? Who is holding this cup? Me. Me. Who is holding this cup? Me. It's easier to, yeah, it's easier to change the way you feel. I have a daughter and sometimes she'll not talk to me. But she's holding the cup like this. She's like more and more angry and more angry. At some point she'll leave me alone and then we have, we, have to, we have to run to her and hug her. And then she'll fight and fight and fight and fight and fight. It doesn't matter what we're fighting about. We all love each other. Fights will always be there. Yeah. Fights will always be there. Eunice, any other question? Um, I think I would like to hear from some of the participants what what do what like now during now during corona i'm sure most of them are like i can't go out to my favorite restaurant i can't go out what what are you doing to make yourself happy because i know it's been tough during this time so maybe it's good to hear from some of them what are they doing and how are they coping i know it's hard the emotions right now where you can't go many places you can't see your friends um, it's good to hear from, especially those who have not spoken. Can we ask Mugambi? I can see there's Mugambi. There's Mugambi what do you yeah. do to make you happy, Mugambi? Um, I normally just go play outside mm -hmm. or ride my bike. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who else wants to go? Somebody who has not spoken, Anthony? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I've been home since last year, so this thing of COVID is not, they all at home, it's not new to me. So. Just play games, uh, edit photos. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, nothing much, but just just relaxing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Naila, Naila Wanjiko. Yes. What What are you doing during this time to bring happy emotions to you? That's a question we're answering. Um, I usually just like listen to music as I'm doing my school work. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. The fact that's a really good, uh, uh, um, actually that's, that's a good way of ensuring you're being 
productive. You're doing something you might find boring, but you do you add something else there that makes it easier to go. Yeah. Yes. Who was that? John and Elizabeth? Yes. What are you guys doing to keep you in a happy, having happy emotions during this time? Well, for me, I like in the morning, like I go for, I go to the gym. It makes me feel happy because, mm -hmm. you know, all the quarantine. Yeah. And I also, later on, I just come read my books because I like reading. Great. And John? Uh, I, I play football, yeah, and read. Okay. okay. Good. So I think I can, I can just um, wind up by saying just a few things. The first is that emotions are part of our living, are part of our day-to-day -day lives. And they're there for a reason. They're a very important part of our lives. But the problem is we don't sometimes listen to them because we have learned to label some emotions as not, not useful, not nice. And as much as we share emotions will share happiness will tell my friend guess what happened to me i was bought this and this will share those but the ones that we think are not so good we try and hide and we try and keep and so it could be you're being disturbed somewhere else by even um anything but because you're not willing to speak about it you're not willing to talk about it because you've labeled that emotion as a bad emotion yeah it then starts coming into other parts of your life that it wasn't even supposed to be in in the first place. And that is why it is important. Understand that all emotions are important. They tell us something. When you're feeling bad, it's an emotion that's telling you something. Listen, try and go back and see how your day has been. Where did it start? Yeah. So that we're not showing up to another place to someone else with baggage with things that experience all the time and so we have to learn to be more aware of why are we feeling the way we are feeling and that way you find your relationships with your teachers your relationships with your parents your relationships with your brothers your sisters your friends is improved is improved so let's not label emotions as good as bad or bad. Let's learn to share them when they come. When they become too much, let's even talk about them even more because they're telling us something. They're always telling us something. They're always looking out for us, for you as a person and trying to tell you, you need to take care here. Yeah, you need to take care. And as you grow up, you will be better managers of your emotions and you will find yourself growing up as more emotionally intelligent human beings. I think with that I can, unless there's any question from any of them. Yes, thanks Vicky. I think we can open to any questions. Um, anyone with a question before we conclude? If we don't have questions, maybe what we can do is just ask each one of you just to tell us something you've picked from this session and something you'll go away and do so that um, it will help you. And, and emotions are important, as Vicky has told us. So I'll just call one by one. Then you can just say something you've learned today and what you are taking away from this session. So I can start with Esther. Um, I have learned, I have, I've learned that the emotions, I should learn how to cope with them and I should learn 
things that make me have positive emotions that I can use later, like when I'm feeling down. Yeah, great. Thank you. Karen? Um, I've learned that all emotions are okay to have, but that they're telling you something. And it's okay to feel embarrassed, to feel annoyed, to feel happy. And, but the best thing to do is to have control over your emotions in a way. And to, um, whenever you're feeling an emotion that, um, let's say you're feeling annoyed, you should try your best to, to help yourself, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Alibiza, Arunga. Okay, I don't know whether they are on mute. Alivita, are you there? Okay, let's go to Imani Makena. Um, I learned that emotions aren't abnormal. It's okay to have them. Mm -hmm. And that I should learn how to control them, what makes me feel happy, music, is it baking, yeah. Great, thank you. Arena? Ariana, sorry, Ariana. <laughs> Ariana Owiti. Um, I've learned um, I should find how to control my emotions. And um, what I'm, that's what I'm going away with. And um, I've also learned that um, you, how to get out of feeling sad, you do what makes you happy and do something that will get you out of that mood. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Great, thank you. Sheila? Sheila, are you there? Okay, we'll come back to Sheila. John and Elizabeth, so maybe John, you can go first, then Elizabeth. I've learned that we should you should learn to control our emotions. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Elizabeth? Well, I've learned that in everything that we do, uh, it should try to be positive so that they keep our emotions positive too. I've learned that being happy helps us spread positivity even to others, not only to us, that we should do what we love. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Naila? I have learned that emotions are not to be suppressed because if you suppress them, they'll come back stronger, like built up and make a bigger deal of what happened. Great. Thank you. Anthony? Just like everyone has been saying, uh, it's about controlling and accepting emotions because because they can affect so much in our daily lives. So, yeah, that's what I've learned. Thank you, Kathy. I think her mic is having an, an issue. Elsie? Elsie Kerry. I think those, okay. I think their mics are having an issue. But thank you. I think Vicky, I've had a lot of control. I'm yeah. glad everyone knows emotions are okay to have. It's okay to feel unhappy. It's okay to feel happy. But I think the key point here is be aware that you have emotions. It's okay. And it's part of life. Yes. List your, your happy and unhappy emotions so that you know what makes you unhappy. Yes. Then on top of that, we need to try and build the happy side. What makes you happy? What things make you happy? Which people make you happy? Try and grow that side 
And of course, one thing we won't forget is holding a cup for a long time. When you hold emotions for a long time, they hurt you. You get frustrated. And you also hurt other people or you react negatively to other people. Yeah. So I think don't hold on to negative emotions, especially. It's good to be in a happy place. Try and keep yourselves happy. And I think that's a very key takeaway for us because ha happy emotions help you build better relationships. So you end up having better relationships at home, better relationships in school with your friends. So I think for me, this topic, uh, is, it's, it's, it's something that we keep growing as an individual and it will balance everything in your life. What I would like to say to you is when you experience that emotion, I also talk, talk to someone. It's important because that's a way of being able to release it. Even as you're getting, you're getting your, yourself to a positive uh, place, go back to that person when you two are not angry. Talk about it. Otherwise, it will happen again. It takes time to develop it, but I'm sure with time, just learning to work on it makes it better. So maybe, uh, Vicky, uh, right now there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of them who have said they like reading. Yeah. Is there any materials you can refer to them to be able to Google or even look for books that they can read on emotions? Is there, are there any books you can recommend? There are books, uh, but I'll send them. I can send them to the forum. You can share with them. I I actually like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> he's a, Doctor? Dr. Seuss. He's a, he's a, he's a cartoonist. He, likes, uh, he writes uh, silly little books about many, many little topics. You might think they're, they're silly, but they're really, really nice. They talk about life in a really interesting way. Uh, yeah, so those are also books. And I, the rest I can send along. I can, I can send along. Yeah. Okay. I can see Sheila was not able to log in, but she's uh, actually given her takeaway from here on the chat. She said she's learned to appreciate all emotions. We feel and take control of them and not the other way around. Thank you, Sheila. We've read your, 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 your takeaway. That's, that's good. So I think we've actually come to the end of the session. For me, I will conclude just by giving a few um, quotes that people have given. Your emotions are slaves to your thoughts and you are a slave to your emotions. That's by Elizabeth Gilbert. Mm -hmm. So if your emotions can easily become your slave, then another one, but feelings can't be ignored no matter how unjust, how ungrateful they seem. That's by Anne Frank. She has written a book, The Diary of a Young Girl. So I think as we go away, let's not belittle our emotions and let us understand ourselves. Let us be aware. And um, thank you so much for being able to join this session this afternoon. We look forward to seeing you in many more sessions. Vicky, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. We also want to thank the team that uh, coordinates all this, Hannah, Agnes, and Kantai. Thank you, and we appreciate your support. And want to wish you all a good evening and a happy evening. Please go and, and, and make yourself happy after this session. Thank you very much. Okay, have a lovely evening. Take care. Same to you. Okay, bye, all. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you for logging in. Thank you.